Hey folks, Todd Coburn, Aerospace Structure Series. Little video on bending stresses. Folks are struggling with this. It's critical you master this. Let's take a look. Let's say we have a cross section. Let's say we have a cross section. It's rectangular. And let's first deal with its properties. Typically, we're going to want to dimension this puppy first. Let's say that it happens to be rectangular and it's 2 by 4. So we'll go ahead and sketch that section with those dimensions. What we're going to need to do is find the CG. Now, if the cross section is very complicated, has any more than one flange, we're going to want to probably create a table. We can do this easily here. We just calculate the moment of inertia about the x-axis. That's going to be 1 12th bh cubed, and that means it's 1 12th times 2 4 cubed. Our i about the y-axis is going to be similarly 1 12th hb cubed, and that is going to be 1 12th 4 times 2 cubed. Now if we calculate those numbers, we're going to find our moments of inertia about the x-axis is going to be 10.666. That's repeated inches to the fourth. And this is going to be uh, 2.66 inches to the fourth. Okay. Now when we apply a moment, let's say our first case, let's say we have a moment, a positive moment, about the x like this. Let's say MX is 20 inch kips. Now our stress, we know, is simply MC over I. But what that means is, since this is a moment about the X, we're going to need to evaluate that against the moment of inertia about the same exact axis, IX. And then the C value will be the distance to the upper and lower fiber. We're going to actually have two that are meaningful. We've got, we could call this C upper and we could call this C lower. Now if we want the stress on the upper surface, let's say this is point A, B, uh, C, and D, any of these points on the upper surface will use that upper C. Any stress on the lower surface will use that lower C. Since these two C's are the same, we can just calculate the magnitude as 20 inch kips we'll say 20k, times c, which in this case is going to be 2, whether we're top or bottom, plus or minus 2, over i about the same axis, which is 10.66 repeated. Now I'm going to use, so I'm going to say 20, plunge that into my calculator, 20,000 times 2 divided by 10.6666666666, and that ought to be enough sixes. That is going to tell us that the stress is plus or minus 3.75 KSI, depending on whether we're on a point up at the top, which where it would be positive, or the bottom where it would be negative. These, this stress is only at the extreme fibers at anywhere along the top surface or anywhere along the bottom surface. If we had a different point with a different C, that would give us a different stress. Okay, this is the stress due to moment one. Now let's say we have another section the exact same section, but let's say now we have a moment about the Y. We have the same points here, A, B, C, D, and the section has the same dimensions. And let's say this MY is also 20 inch kips. Now our stress is just MC over I, but what we're going to need, since this is a moment about the Y, we're going to need the Y about the Y and the corresponding C. In this case, the corresponding C will be this value and this value. So we're going to have a little c here, that's c right, and a little c over here, that's c left. Since this is symmetric, those c's will be the same, but that will determine, we can see, if we plug in the c over here, that's going to be positive c, that's going to give us a positive stress, and over on this right side, it will give us a negative stress. So we say, okay, we got 20 inch kips, times our C, which is plus or minus 1, over I, which is the I about the Y, which is 2.66 repeated. 
and we plug that into our calculator and we're going to find out our stress is going to be plus or minus 7.5 KSI. Now let's say we have a different case and let's say this particular section is exactly the same but now we have MY equals 20 inch kips and MX equals 20 inch kips. We still have C's, these two C's going this way or this way are for our MY and these two C's are for our MX. Now all we need to do when we calculate our stress it will just be MX over IX times C4X, right, which is a Y dimension. Uh, so actually, I'm going to leave that subscript off since it's actually in the Y direction. And then we're going to have plus or minus, and this could be plus or minus, MY over IY. And now we're going to have C for the Y, okay? This is for vertical bending, and this is for horizontal bending. This means... We're going to need, if we look here, we're going to see we're going to get in this thing, we're going to have either plus or minus our 3.75. And in this pot position, we're going to have plus or minus 7.50. Now, if we look at this, we say, well, if we're up here at point A, we're going to have positive stress from the MX and positive stress from the MY. That's positive, positive. That means when we put these two stresses together, we're going to get 11.25 KSI. That's at point A. It's a normal stress. At point B, we see that our MX is going to give us a positive value, but our MY is going to give us a negative value. Therefore, the stress will be uh, negative 3.75 KSI. We see it's a compressive stress. At point C, we have, that's down here, we're going to get a negative stress from the MX, and we're going to get a negative stress from the MY. That means we have negative 11.25 KSI. If we have our point D, we see we're going to get, up here, we're going to get a negative stress from the MX, and we're going to get a positive stress from the MY, and that's going to give us plus 3.75 KSI. When we were all done, we would then write our stress. Let's say we actually wanted the stress at point B, that means we would say the stress at B is equal to negative 3.75 KSI. We're going to box that with proper sig figs. Or, or we could say up B equals 3.75 KSI compression and box that. That's how you calculate stresses about different axes. You have to use the moment written against the corresponding if the moment is about a certain axis, you need the moment of inertia about that axis. And then you're going to multiply that quantity by the C value that's representative. So if it's a moment about the x-axis, you're going to need the vertical position for your C of the point. If you have a moment about the y-axis, you're going to need the horizontal position for the C in your stress calc. You need to be able to recognize whether it's positive or negative. If you want to just plug and chug in an equation, you'll say m y minus y bar over i if you're using a right-hand rule sign convention, and m y bar minus y over i for a horizontal stress if you're using beam sign convention. Study this video. Make sure you match this concept. Enjoy.